Bro, what's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson from Sales Funnel Radio and today I'm going to talk to you about my very favorite book. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up? Hey, so... Um I have sold many copies of this guy's book and I wanna teach you guys why. And there's a really important lesson inside of this, okay? This is my favorite book that's out there. Um, I'm really psyched for you guys to see this, but what I decided to do was, I've never actually shared with you guys the story on why this book is so powerful and important to me. Um, luckily, because I did Offermind, my own event right back in November, which you guys can go get tickets now at Offermind.com, which I'm very excited about. Um, if, you, if you guys wanna see why though, this is so impactful and so important, I, I actually, recorded finally the story of why this is such an important and very impactful uh, book. <laughs> For those of you guys who know what's about to happen, just don't tell anyone else. <laughs> Have fun. We're going to cut over. So I got a really cool um, story to tell you guys. Um, some of you guys have heard me tell this story. And if you've heard me tell it, I don't, don't ruin it, okay? I'm really excited about it. I, I, the game's hard for a while, right? It's hard. You're proving to life, existence, God, the universe, everybody, the market, that you actually want it. Oh, you want this cool thing? Sweet. Objection, objection, objection. Constraint, 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 right? Funny enough, those are the fun things that people follow, follow you anyway for, right? Um, I remember it was around business try eight. For me, business try eight was rough, man. It was like, I, I just, that's where it was mentally, it was starting to get me down. Because I was one of the only people besides Russell in the entire world that I even knew was doing this. And he, he didn't know who I was. All right, so it got lonely. And I didn't know how to describe it to other people well. So it was my, it was my own, you know, crap was kind of hitting the fan uh, mentally for me. And I was trying to stay true to it. And I was trying to stay, I was like, this, I know it's there, I know it's there. It's going to be super, like, but it's there. It's there. I'm just going to keep going. I was like, but oh man, am I just being stubborn? Should I get a job? You know what I mean? It's that conflict back and forth. Is it really there? Or am I just kind of believing in this mirage? Right? And that's when a lot of self-doubt starts to creep in and stuff. And there was, there was this, um, there was this moment where I started learning enough that I would get in kind of fights with teachers. <laughs> I'd get in all these fights with these other marketing professors. And uh, for whatever reason, at that moment, that's, things started turning for me, for my sake. And when you declare what you want and you start walking, things will begin to conspire for you. There's also some opposition that will happen, but most people aren't even just declaring publicly what they want big enough for things to conspire in the first place, right? Stuff will begin to happen for you, all right? I believe it's God, okay? And stuff will happen for you, for your sake. And like, crap, this is, that's really, really cool. I, that moment had not quite happened yet. It was close though. Okay, it was right at that part in my journey. And again, I, I was sucking it up on several different business attempts I tried. And uh, uh, life was really challenging, right? Army, college, married kids, right? It was like, it was, it was, it was a lot. And this, I remember this one time um, we went to, um, we would go to like, there's like a Taco Bell or something like that. That's where our date nights would be because of 89 cent bean burritos. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, that's all we could afford. And it was, it was, it was fun, but it was extremely humbling and just a constant reminder of what I wasn't. Okay. Popularized and realness coming out here. Okay. That was, it was, it was hard. And, um, as I started trying the next business, I knew the next one was coming up. I was excited. And I was telling Princess Babe about it. <laughs> and uh, she wanted to believe in me. And, and it was uh, challenging. And when she asked, is this the one? And I was sitting there. And inside, I was like, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know either. I'm asking myself the same thing. Is this the one? You know, on the outside, I'm like, yeah, baby, nothing but a thing. I'm your man, right? I will provide. And I wasn't, right? I will provide. And I was like, I was not providing at all. And um, we were living on loans, you know? And, um, and it was really tough, you know? And I remember clichely, like a little bit later, we were, we were walking down, um, or I was, I, was, I, was, I came out of one of my economics classes, quantitative economics. <laughs> It sucked, okay? And, and I see this guy sitting at a bench. He's sitting at this park bench, and, and I'm sitting there. I'm sorry, he's sitting there, and, I, and it's like it had been raining, right? And these things are just running through my head. Crap, like, is this the one? She asked me. I want to feel like a man, you know? I want to feel like a man. I want to provide. I want to be her man, right? And I want to be, like, am I, am I good enough? for this. Man, maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you should go get a job. Like, oh, wait, if I go get a job, $8 an hour times that time, we still won't make it. Like, so I should keep living on loans, but like, oh my gosh, like, right. And I would, all these things, just noise, man. Like how many guys have felt the noise? Noise, 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 noise. You're like, shut up. You know, it's like, but I believe it, but am I, am I psycho, you know? And all, all those things were just running through my head. Boom, 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 boom. Is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the one? I don't know if this is going to work. I don't either. Let's go put money on it. Are you serious? You know what I mean? Let's go get money for ads. It's like, what? I don't have money for ads. We could barely eat, you know? We're barely, and it, it, was, um, it was a serious moment. A lot of my passion comes from that, because I know a lot of you guys are in that. I'm trying to like, get you through it, okay? And I remember walking down the street, and all these things are going through my head, and there's all these voices, and all these doubts, and there's family in, family out, friends in, friends out. Like, oh, it's just like, I was the divide, right? <laughs> I was the Red Sea and they're splitting me. It's like, holy crap. Like it, it was, anyway, I'm walking down the street and I see this old gentleman sitting in, I'd never seen him before. And he was sitting on this park bench and it just stopped raining and super cheesy straight out of a freaking movie, the clouds part, you know? And I'm like, oh gosh. And this guy is sitting on the bench and you could tell the dude is just wearing wealth. Just so filthy freaking rich. You know what I mean? You could just tell, you could just tell. And, um, and I'm a ways off and, and this limo pulls up and this limo pulls up and this dude with unnaturally straight posture gets out of the car, you know, you know, like super awesome posture. And he walks around the front, you know, and he opens up the car door and does this little half bow. <laughs> I was like, eh, okay. And, um, and I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get a little bit closer, and this guy gets up, this older gentleman, he stands up, and he starts to get in the car, and they exchange looks. You could tell they knew each other. There's a history, you know. Maybe he's been a driver for a while or something. I don't know. But he stands up, and he starts walking to the car, to the limo, the back seat right there, and he's about to get in. They exchange words, and I'm, by this time, I'm getting pretty close, you know, like here to that little VIP sign, you know, and I'm getting kind of close. And he gets in, and they start closing the door, and something in me, out of sheer desperation, made me run. And I ran, because I wanted it. And I ran, and I slammed my hand in the door right before it closed. It hurt. But I wanted him to know I was there, but not to, like, kill him either, you know, so I'm like... And I'd been running full speed, so like, hey, what's up? I know you don't know me. Whew, that's a great way to start. How did you get this? I'm not sure you get asked it a lot. How'd you get this? And he stops. <laughs> I think once he realized I wasn't there, I heard him. He's like, yeah, a lot of people ask me that. I said, how do you do it? It's not that I'm not trying. I'm launching. I'm doing the stuff. What is wrong? Like, someone else has had success. I'm not. I'm the variable. What is wrong with me? Right? What is it? What is it? He looks down, and I was in this moment of, like, passion for it, right? Which I know is hard to imagine. And, <laughs> and he, he looks at me, and he goes, he looks at me, and he goes, he goes, um, He hands me this book, and he said, you need to read this book. It's what he was reading on the bench before the car pulled up. He had closed it, and he handed it over to me, and he said, if you will read this for 20 minutes every day, and then spend the next 40 applying it, you will not recognize your life in two years. That was four years ago. How cool is that? 
That was four years ago. Okay. And he handed that thing up and he drove off and never saw him again. <laughs> it's like super random. The clouds parted. Maybe his message. Right. And, and, um, I was like, so cool, you know, and since then being in Russell's world, you know, I've had a lot more connections. My Rolodex has grown a lot. And, uh, and so I got out, to, I re I'm in contact with him now and I uh, reached back out to him and I was like, Hey man, just so you know, that was like a huge deal to me. And so I spent for the next year, 20 minutes reading the book, 40 minutes applying, 20 minutes reading, 40 minutes applying and spent the whole year like that. And in one year, stuff started happening in my life. It was really interesting. I stopped looking at the clock, stopped judging my self-worth based on how fast that guy did it or how, how quickly this lady made success. Stopped looking at the clock and I just put my head down. Okay. So we actually have a really cool little thing for you guys here. Um, he and I have been in communication quite a bit now, which is really fun. And uh, he said, uh, I can give you guys all a copy of this book. It's really exciting. <laughs> I know, right? It's awesome. So what we're going to do is, uh, uh, we'll take a little break here soon, but what we're going to do is uh, we have the, uh, the actual book, okay? Um, and I am a very slow reader, so I asked him if I could, if I was like licensed or whatever to read it. So I've read the entire book. So I have an audio book for you from me. Um, and then we also gave you guys, there's also like a little checklist so you guys can make sure that you've actually done it correctly. Okay. Each one of the things that it's really sweet. It's really cool that he did that. I know. All right. And, um, and then uh, he and I have gained quite a relationship, especially from telling this story. I don't know why the heck he was in my town still, <laughs> but when he was anyway, um, uh, but he, he, um, he wants to do a little private event. So in about six months from now, we're going to do a little private event. But uh, we literally just have this little tiny room. It's actually in his living room. <laughs> okay. Only holds 20 people. It's the first 20 of you guys who want it. Uh, we're going to get you guys to an event with him, with me, and we will actually apply stuff. So it's in six months from now so that you guys actually have time to actually consume this stuff and do it. Sound good? Okay. So you guys will get the actual book. The audio book, we have a checklist for you guys, and then we're going to do uh, the first 50 of you guys, we have um, a private event. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. I want to break real quick, and we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Have you? you can re-mic me. That's a joke. <laughs> Anyone confused? <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready to buy something? <laughs> yeah? Is that, you guys are all... Wait, what? What did I just do with your emotions there? That's all fake, by the way. I've never read that book. <laughs> That's, it's funny because I know a lot of you guys have seen me do that now. It's easy to see who hasn't yet. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, baby. Woo. Okay. I've never read this book. Random one off my shelf. How many guys want it? How many knew it was fake and you want it? Right? Some of you guys see me do that. Why do you want it? The story. What about the story makes it so impactful? I painted your exact situation. How did I know that? Because I've been there and I know my Red Ocean customer. I know you. I know the stories you've been in. I know the scenarios you're in. A lot of it's because I've been there as well. By you understanding a person, it allows you to craft story and a sales message, which is what we're about to go into, okay? okay. <laughs> My favorite book, yeah, that I've never read, okay? <laughs> we're going to talk about the purple sales message, okay? Did I talk about the chapters in the book? Nope. No! But you wanted it. Too many of you are like, oh, I got to build this last feature in my offer. That's what makes it sell. No! That's not what makes it sell. Okay. What makes it sell is a sales message has nothing to do with the product. Everything about how you sell has everything to do with the story you tell. Okay. It's all about the story. That is the sales mechanism. The product just fulfills on it. Okay. That's what will make you scratch the itch and go, oh my gosh, I remember this chapter. He talked about it, even though it didn't like, oh, this chapter is amazing. I remember the backstory. I wonder if this is what he was reading when he talked to him on the bench. It's like, Right? And you begin to romanticize certain elements about the product. So when you see the product for the first time, you're like, I, remember, I know the backstory behind this feature. I know, I know why this was such a big deal. Okay? It is the, one of the most common things that I run into when I'm coaching people. Stephen, I haven't launched yet because my product's not done. Then you're freaking not doing it. Okay? It has nothing to do with the product. And we often will use that as a logical excuse, although it is not. 
on why we haven't started. It's how I can sell something that isn't yet made. Take money, it's no bait and switch, they know it's not made yet, and then go make it once the market has voted with their wallet. Okay? This sales message, this, I call it the purple sales message. I'm going to tell you guys why here in a little bit, okay? It's the, 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 the power of it is that you'll be able to test a whole bunch of stories, a whole bunch of sales things along the way that will then allow you to make the product in security rather than risk. Not spend eight months like I did building my first product, okay? All of that was fake. All of that was fake. How many of you guys felt more of a connection to my wife because of that? Fake story. Is that interesting? That's amazing, isn't it? The power of that. That's a huge deal. Okay? All of that was fake. None of that happened. None of that happened. <laughs> she is. She's right here. Princess Babe exists. Russell sent me a message once and he goes, dude, you've got to stop telling that story. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, they're not going to believe you when you actually go sell something. I was like, but it's the same story every time. So maybe I'll know it's coming. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> trying to figure out a craft that in Fun Hacking Live. But so many people, a lot of people have seen it now. Okay, that's the point though. I'm trying to help you guys understand that this is how stuff is sold. It's got nothing to do with the product. I'm not talking about the chapters. No one gives a crap about your features. It's not the reason why someone buys. Okay, so obsessing over little tiny items in there, that's good, that's great. Over deliver for your clients, over deliver for your customers. I, I believe in that. So we're doing this, okay, I believe in that. But with the understanding, but that is not what puts money in your wallet. What puts money in the wallet is the sales message, and that's what we're going to create now. Yeah? yeah. What's up? Okay. <laughs> Poverty's shaking. <clears throat> Got you, son. Boom. If you're just starting out, you're probably studying a lot. That's good. You're probably geeking out on all the strategies also, right? That's also good. But the hardest part is figuring out what the market wants to buy and how you should sell it to them, right? That's also what I struggled with for a while until I learned the formula. So I created a special mastermind called an offer mind to get you on track with the right offer and more importantly, the right sales script to get it off the ground and sell it. Want to come? There's small groups on purpose so I can answer your direct questions in person for two straight days. You can hold your spot by going to offermind.com. Again, that's offermind.com.